presenter is archivist and curator of collections at the Arab American National Museum. But by night, she dreams of running away to join the service. Please welcome Elizabeth Steen. This is me in a museum with cats. And it's a really good representation of who I am and what I like. I'm a pretty timid person by nature, and I'm anxious at the thought of new people, places, things, nouns. But on July 30th, 2011, in one afternoon, I went to both uh, Maker Fair at the Henry Ford and Ignite Great Lakes. And I saw people that were doing things that were interesting that were inspiring, that they were passionate about, that were a little off the wall. And I wanted to be one of those people. But being the timid person I am, that doesn't come naturally. So I knew I would have to be intentional about doing it. I'm circled in red in the corner. I had known about the Detroit Fly House for a little while, and it was recommended by a friend of a friend who said of it, if this was a cult, I would already be shaveheaded and passing out flowers. <laughs> and with that rousing recommendation, I gathered all of the courage and inspiration that I had from that day, and I signed up and I started taking classes. And I fell in love with it instantly. These photos are from my first two classes. And doing aerial taught me a lot of things. The first thing that it taught me was that yes, it is absolutely about physical strength, something that I had to gain, but it also helped me gain mental strength. I started to gain confidence in a way I never had before, and I started to feel proud of myself, which was kind of a new feeling. I also learned about trust and letting go. I had to trust myself that I could do this. I had to let go of my fears and my worries, and in the instance of this photo, I had to physically let go, and you fall 360 degrees face first, and it's terrifying but exhilarating. <laughs> I also learned how to make new connections, something that doesn't always come easily for me. Uh, the people in the background of this photo started out as friends and teachers, or started out as, as classmates and teachers, but as we shared each other's struggles and triumphs, we became friends. And I also kept pushing myself beyond my comfort zone. I am not a performer by nature, hair and makeup and none of that is, is easy for me, but these connections encouraged me and I kept doing them. So fast forward to this past April, when the Ann Arbor Aviary opened. I live in Ipsy, um, so it was convenient for me to go all the time, so I did. And actually, the woman who said that it would be a cult that she would join, opened the aviary. So they asked me to teach my own classes after a while. So I had to make this transition from being the student whose photo was being taken, to being the teacher and taking the photos. And I thought about what was it that I loved so much about Ariel? Why was it my favorite place? Why did I always come home happy and empowered? It was a safe place. It was a fun place. It was never competitive. And I wanted to provide that same experience for my students as they helped themselves grow and move beyond their comfort zones. So I sat down and I made myself write out a teaching philosophy. And that is personal empowerment in a supportive and encouraging environment. I want people to feel like they did something. If it's just sitting on the trapeze and that's it, I want them to feel proud of that. And the things I learned as a student, I was still learning as a teacher. Mental strength. I will never know everything. I will never be a professional performer. But that doesn't mean that I can't be a really good teacher. I've learned how to trust and let go continuously. Um, to let others be there for me, to learn how to be there for them, both emotionally and physically. And I've also learned how to keep making connections, to connect with the other teachers, but also more importantly, to connect with my students, and to, to watch them grow, and to watch them struggle, and to watch them triumph. I absolutely love helping them be there for them, and um, watching them prepare for their first performance is one of my favorite things. And I'm still pushing myself beyond my comfort zone. I'm here tonight. I'm still performing. I'm learning things like acro yoga. I have a pair of stilts now. <laughs> it's, it's an ongoing process and a really valuable one. But at the end of the day, for all those wonderful things, it's not easy. It never will be easy. And it probably shouldn't be easy. And that's part of the joy of Ariel, is that something that a month ago seemed impossible, if you keep trying and a little bit by a little bit, you'll get there and you'll be able to do it. And these lessons I've applied to my life outside of the studio. 
And if you knew me two years ago, I'm, not, I'm a much more confident and courageous person now. And so, if a quiet, timid, cat lady like myself can become a superhero, then I want to encourage you to find something that you're passionate about and to get outside your comfort zone. Thank you.